So these are the light settings. Rainy light settings. Save. All right. And I'll re-export it to the just in case. Export file. Into the tutorial fol folder. Rainy TOD. Okay. Keep in mind, we need to keep uh, to see the time it is here. Sixteen. Seventeen. All right. Open up the tutorial level again and import those settings. And obviously, this TOD, um, I just spent like uh, an hour or two just tweaking the values and the sliders until I, I had the desired effect. into any problems and apparently we do run into problems just the fact of loading up and closing up the level got me into some problems because maybe I didn't save probably save the level uh, or actually I did save the level but these are probably some bugs that Crytek needs, needs to fix later in the future but it's not, it's not too bad I mean we can probably find a walk around for this. Let's see if the uh, generate surface texture fixes it. And it doesn't, so I'll have to re-import and we can as you can see here, terrain texture size has been changed randomly. I don't know why. So um, what can I do? Try re-importing the texture again. to some a lot of random problems I'll just save this up first generate surface texture again just in case it does do some changes nope all right let's refine textures Oh, damn. This is not what I want. So I will have to reopen. To go back to my previous state since it removed the undo redo stacks when I did the refined texture. So you need to be, be careful when you do it. And, um,. What you need to do here, I mean, what you s we can see here, we'll have to manually change the resolution of each tile here again. Well, I mean, we could try re importing, but we'll have a 512 square here. That's what we have 512, we got a, a 1K, and we're working on a 2K texture. So we need to change the resolution tiles again. So we go back to layer painter, change, put this to 512, 512 again. I mean, 
at the very start we didn't really need to do a refine um, a refine terrain texture tiles since we would have um, four tiles here on the whole terrain instead of uh, a four by four let's see how many we have here yeah four big tiles instead of 16 tiles and uh, it pro it's it is probably easier to just change four tiles and just saving 16 tiles when you you meet a problem checking out if I didn't forget any tiles and I'm gonna make sure that I'll save it this time and that it does not change okay save Let's go to terrain, import texture, import, close, okay, save again. Generate surface texture, 24 by 24, um, 2048 by 2048. I didn't, if you notice, I didn't check the high quality options and the, um, I made occlusion option because otherwise it would take a lot of time to generate the surface texture for now. I mean even right now it's already taking a bunch of time. Alright, um, it is done. Um, generate the surface textures. Um, let's see. Um, we could try going to the game and just to have a sense of scale. And you'll notice that the terrain is super big, even though it's only 1024 by 1024 height map. So you can imagine the results you can get with a 2048 by 2048 height map. Um let's see. We'll get probably a better place here to take a look at our terrain at our terrain. Now if you want your terrain to look a bit more high res and look better in game or inside the level, there's a probably there probably is better there's a console command that you could tweak and change which helps you um, have some control over the level of detail and the tessellation of the terrain as you can see the tessellation here is concentrated uh, around the, the player and if you want to have this kind of tessellation over there and have it look really nice um, if for maybe a screenshot or a promotional purposes, uh, we can go in game and type the command. Now the actual command is uh, e underscore terrain um, lod resue. If you press enter, it will tell you that the default value is one, and if you put this to zero 
it will use the highest um, tessellation. There, there won't be any tessellation for terrain optimization, so it's going to render the full resolution of the terrain on the whole scale of the, on the whole terrain. No matter where you are. So if I switch to white frame, you get full tessellation. Even if I go back, you can see the tessellation. So you can play around with this value because actually it is a value that comes from zero to one. It is a ratio, anyways. And if I do 0.05, I'll get half the quality um, I had uh, when I had the value set to zero. So it could probably be a good compromise between quality and um, perform performance. Because right now, when I'm what I'm rendering right now is um, hadron K triangles, uh, polys. So that is with uh, the value set to 0 0.5. 0 um, a value of 0 gives us around half a million polygons, which is fairly acceptable. Um, and it does look nice. Yep. I'm guessing that I'm just going to keep it at this value here at 0 for um, since the terrain isn't that big anyways and the resolution of the terrain isn't that big as well. Alright, now what we need to do in the TOD is remove this grain effect because I'm not liking this and it's not what I'm looking for anyways. This grain effect set it down to zero. Save. to do is probably fix the height of the fog. I mean the, the ocean already got some nice color to it, all we need to do is just some simple tweaks here and there. So fog, right? Let's try. Yeah, this height seems to look nice. There's Turn it down just a tiny bit. Okay. What else can we tweak? We probably need to tweak the sun. Place it somewhere in a different position. Um, let's go to lighting. And change its position. Put it in a position where the light will help you get some of that volume out. And in this kind of position helps you get all the volume information shown to the players. If I'm a player and I'm coming, I'll have to go from this point to that point. It's probably better to have the sun coming from the front, that way you'll get shadows falling tower towards your direction. And especially in this case. Or we can put it on this side. Let's see. Equate 
future functions. If you're planning to have a more dramatic effect, have some gauze rays like Paul. Let's say, if, if, like we said earlier, if let's say we have a castle on this side here and you got a sun behind it, you'll get some gauze rays falling and some shadowing falling from the castle. That will give you a more dramatic effect. And as you can see, the lighting really does add a lot to the terrain. There you go. Um, I'm not going to go too much in depth into layer painting. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'll still import a basic layer into terrain. That way you can see the basics of uh, adding up some detail texture maps into your terrain. So I'll go to terrain texture. I'll just select this layer here and um, open up the material editor. The materials. Uh, open up materials folder then go into terrain select one of the materials one of the grass materials and uh, select this layer texture and uh, assign material. You'll notice that our texture has been applied on the whole terrain. You can probably try a different texture. It's all up to you, anyways. save first just in case I'm gonna say in this case you know I got some sand here I'll have to create another new texture layer here with the appropriate layer texture on this side that w so that it could blend properly and then I can just start painting the sand but it will just leave it the way it is for now. Let's try to go in game. Let's see how it looks. So I'll just turn off our display info. Move the roller bar. Um, let's see where else. Um, for Let's say you don't want to see the tiling too much show up on your terrain, okay? You're playing a third person game and um, or, or first person shooter. Uh, what we could do is, because right now we can see the tiling of the texture, that's it. Uh, what we could do is tweak some settings in the environment uh, options here with environment and then there is a uh, detail layer vague distance ratio so if I set this to 0 0.5 you can see that the ra radius gets smaller 